The exciting story begins when Yu leaves his apartment for the first time after moving to Tokyo. He has to buy food and get back home soon. But as a Twitter addict, he does not lift his gaze from the phone screen and keeps tweeting about his whereabouts and reading exciting comments from his followers. Suddenly he hears a young singer's newly released melodious song, stops in front of the screen, and starts looking at the song video. At the same time, a schoolgirl comes running towards her and jumps on him. All her DVDs fall on the road. Yu gets up and apologizes to her even if it was not his mistake, and he once again casually puts the phone screen in front of his face. But the girl assumes he is trying to take the picture from her underpant and gets angry. Without giving him time to clear his position, she snatches his mobile and throws it on the road. It breaks immediately. Then she slaps him so hard that Yu falls on the road face down. He could do nothing but watch the girl return on the same road with the speed of a summer breeze. She is Fuka, and it was his first encounter with her in this city. After getting his phone repaired, he reaches home late, where his sisters are waiting for him to bring food. But they already know from his Twitter posts what happened and why he is late. In contrast to Yu, who is on Twitter, he talks so little at home. His sisters complain about him being too quiet. Yu feels awkward surrounded by his sisters, who have no male siblings. His elder sister, Maya, welcomes him and shares that his parents have safely reached America. In the meantime, he puts the packed food on the table, and his younger sisters begin arguing about the food while he thinks he always lived in the countryside with his youngest sister and parents. But now that his parents have moved to America, he and his younger sister have decided to live with their two elder sisters, already living in Tokyo. After dinner, his sisters sit in front of the TV when the same famous singer's song plays on the TV. Hibiki cheerfully asks Yu if he is in contact with her. The singer named Koyuki was his school friend, but after she became famous, they had no contact with each other. Also, Yu wondered why she would remember her ordinary friend from school if he never tried to contact her. But Hibiki reminds him that he is not the cheerful boy he once was. Now he looks like a phone addict and antisocial person. It angers him, and he leaves the room. Before returning to his room, Meyer ensured he would attend school the next day for admission. He assures her and looks at the CD that fell from Fuka's back. The next day, he submits the admission forms and strolls out of the school. Meanwhile, he keeps tweeting about the new school and is about to post the photo when he sees Fuka standing on the roof. Once again, Fuka thinks that he is taking inappropriate pictures from his mobile phone, and she immediately comes down, running towards him. She asks him to give him the mobile, as she wants to see what he is doing for herself. But Yu refuses to give it to her, saying that he has some personal stuff in it. In that argument, the phone fell from his hand. Yu runs downstairs to find his phone, but he cannot find it anywhere. He gets so worried because he borrowed this phone from the shopkeeper. Fuka joins him in this search because she still wants to know what he is doing on the phone. When he asks her to ring the phone, which will help him find it, Fuka shares that she has no phone and she likes to enjoy her time listening to music on the DVD. That's unbelievable for Yu, but he leaves her and looks for his phone again. He also returns the DVD she threw the last day on the road. Yu reaches home without any phone as he cannot find it anywhere. But he gets annoyed seeing that all three of his sisters are wearing undergarments instead of proper dresses. He scolds them, asks them to get dressed appropriately, and then goes to his room to sleep. The next day, during the introduction to his class, he sees that Fuka is his classmate. After the class, he sees a guy trying to take Fuka somewhere while she refuses him. You immediately run to help her and save her from that pervert. But it turns out that the guy wanted to take her to recruit for the school track team, and she did not want to do that. After listening to that, Yu runs away and hides his face in embarrassment. It was not what he thought. He felt he must have asked if she needed help. Meanwhile, Fuka comes to give him his phone, which she found after searching a lot. The next day, he stood at the same spot and looked at the two tickets to a movie that Maya had given him. He can't decide what to do with the tickets. Suddenly, Fuka looks at the tickets and screams in excitement as this movie has the soundtrack of her favorite singer. She makes sure that no one but she will go with him to watch the film. The following day, Yu reaches the front of the cinema and sits aside to wait for Fuka. In the meantime, he tweets that he will be with the same girl who broke his phone. His followers ask for a date, and many comment with very good wishes for him. He immediately tweets that this is not what they are thinking. On the other hand, Fuka keeps waiting in front of Hachiko. They looked for each other around Hachiko simultaneously and could not find each other. Suddenly, Fuka decides to get on the pillar and screams Yu's name at the top of her lungs. He hears her voice and runs from behind the Hachiko. After finally reuniting, they reach the cinema corridor, where many others are waiting in line. Cinema owners announced they would only allow couples to watch the movie inside. Without hesitation, Fuka grabs his arm and asks him to act as if they are a couple on a date. Initially, Fuka hesitates to grab her hand, but then she asks him to hold her hand tightly. She is unsure how couples act, but she tries pretending to be a good girlfriend. She asks Yu, but he also has no idea how couples work. 
Fuka truly enjoyed the movie, and on their way back home, all she talked about was the song of her favorite singer, Koyuki. Yu asks her if the music was that good, and she shares that it was perfect. Suddenly, she stops and puts her hand inside her back. She takes out two cute stickers from it, which they got from the cinema. These were given as a bonus to couples only, and she insists that Yu keep them and stick them on the back of his mobile phone. Yu refuses to take them, as he needs them. Besides, they are not a couple, so there is no point in keeping them. But Fuka does not listen and puts them in his bag. While walking away, she cheerfully tells him she enjoyed the date. Yu gets so surprised, as he never really thought it was a date. He only keeps looking at her as she walks away. He believes that this girl is really weird. When Fuka reaches home, she calls her mom excitedly to tell her about the movie. She enjoyed it and assured her mom that she also focused on her studies alongside these activities. Then she tells her that the track team wants her to join them, but she refuses. Her mom knows that she wants to know what she wants to do. But Fuka tells her she has not found anything and is still confused about what she wants to do. Instead of asking her to be a part of the track team, as a good mom, her mom encourages her to take more time to think about what she wants to do and hangs up the phone. Her father heard in the conversation that she still did not want to join the track team. He was a national champion, and he used to bring her cleats and stopwatches from a very young age. But Fuka's mom doesn't want her father to influence her life choices now. Also, her father is happy if his daughter does what she wants. For now, all she wants is to listen to music. The following day, Yu is walking in the school corridor when he receives a message from his friend and sink, Koyuki. She sends him a direct message to connect. Suddenly, he sees Fuka standing beside a window. She turns her head towards him, and he sees tears in her eyes. Fuka had her headphones on and ran away as soon as she saw him. Yu tries to stop her, but she disappears. Looking down from the window, Yu sees his classmate Mikasa sitting. In the classroom, Yu sees Mikasa cheerfully talking to another girl and assumes that Mikasa likes that girl and Fuka likes him too. The love triangle frustrated Fuka, so she cried. A teacher asking free students to join the club breaks the sequence of his thoughts. The teacher assigns Mikasa, Yu, and Fuka to clean the pool. Yu looks so worried, as he has never cleaned such a place. But Fuka tries to cheer him up, saying he will do that. He tries to ask her about her relationship with Mikasa but then hesitates, and instead of telling her anything, he starts working. The blazing sun drains his stamina, but he sees that Fuka looks relatively fresh, cleaning the pool's floor. He shares that she looks like a professional cleaning the pool. Fuka smiles and shares that she is allowed to use a relative's bathhouse on the condition that she will clean it, too. That makes sense, so she is not tired of cleaning this place. She sometimes asks Yu to go with her to enjoy the comfortable bath in that bathhouse. Cleaning the pool, he looks at Mikasa and Fuka happily talking to each other, as there is no hard feeling between them. They look like good friends instead. After a moment, Fuka comes to him to teach him how to clean the floor like a pro, but her foot slips on the floor. She falls, and her skirt gets wet. That makes her dress look inappropriate, and she gets angry, assuming that Yu is looking at her. She discreetly walks towards the changing room while Mikasa tells him that Fuka and he have a good friendship and are very similar. After a while, Fuka returned, and they finished the cleaning. Afterwards, Mikasa goes to return the cleaning tools, while Fuka sees that Yu is tired now. She laughs as if it were nothing to her. Yu shouts that she enjoyed the cleaning because she was with Mikasa the whole time. He tells her that he saw that Mikasa spends time with other girls and likes her, which Fuka dislikes, which is why she was crying earlier that day, because she finds herself trapped in a love triangle. Fuka is so surprised by this, as she has no romantic feelings for Mikasa. Besides, there is something he does not know about him yet. At the same time, Mikasa tells him that everybody knows, and now Yu should know it too, that he has no interest in girls, so he looks at Yu with love. Yu feels terrible as he is a straight guy. On their way home, Yu finally asks Fuka why she was crying. To answer him, she grabs a DVD from her bag and shares that the songs on the DVD make her cry each time she listens to them. The lyrics are about singer Koyuki's feelings about missing someone. He feels embarrassed that he could not understand why she was crying and assumed things. Fuka shares that she is not unhappy about anything. The only thing that bothers her is her confusion, she does not know what she wants to do. It saddens her to think about what suits her, and she certainly does not want to join the track team. Fuka asks for his suggestion, but he has no idea what's on her mind. Fuka reveals that she is happy that he was worried about her crying, and he is kind, just like the meaning of her name. On the other hand, singer Koyuki receives a message from you that he and his whole family miss you. He shares that his friends love her songs and cry over their lyrics. His reply makes Koyuki so happy. Fuka participates in high jumps the next day and Mikasa shouts to encourage her to join the track team. She refuses him again, and Yu thinks that she is a gifted athlete. At the same time, Mikasa tells him that Fuka does not know what she wants to do, so she looks like a caged bird. 
Mikasa suggests to you that he should help her find what she wants to do. She would easily listen to him because he saw that she was really attracted to him. Later that day, Fuka asks him if he has any plans for Sari. After discovering he is free, she tells him they will go someplace together. After school, Fuka received Koyuki's call. She could not understand what to say to him. Suddenly, she hears the female voices on the phone. Yu's sisters annoy him, and he pushes them out of his room. They think that he wants privacy as he is talking to his girlfriend. After hearing their voices, Koyuki laughs, as his sisters haven't changed in all these years. Then Koyuki invites him to her concert and tells him that she will share the stage with Hedgehog for the first time, which was her dream, and he even called her Tama because it was the name of Hedgehog's lead vocalist. But when Yu finds out that the concert is on Sai, he refuses, as he has already committed to Fuka. But he promises to come to her next concert. Koyuki hesitantly asks if she can call him occasionally, which he allows, and they hang up the call. It makes Koyuki immensely happy that he doesn't mind if she calls him again. On Sari, Yu reaches where Fuka asked him to come, and it's Koyuki's concert that Fuka wants to go to with him. She tells him that she initially wanted to go with her aunt, but she cancelled the plan, so she brought him here. While on the backstage stage, Koyuki feels a bit overwhelmed, as it was her dream to perform with Hedgehog. Her assistant assures her that she earned this place with her immense talent, but she knows deep down that in her songs, she is only living the memories of the time she spent with her love. She says that she sings so that she may find him someday, but Koyuki is not hopeful that she will ever meet him. The concert begins, and Yu feels sad that she could have told Koyuki that he was attending the concert, but then he decides to talk to her afterwards. The crowd is shouting, but Koyuki shuts her eyes and misses the days he spent with Yu. How happy they were in those moments, she had to leave the city with her mom one day. Then she opened her eyes, and in the front row, she saw Yu standing in front of her. That day, instead of singing sadly, she sang cheerfully on stage. Her song is about the hope of meeting her lover one day. After the concert, Fuka walks home with him and shares that she had so much fun and didn't like the loneliness after the concert. One thing she noticed today was that Koyuki was not her usual self. Unlike before, she was happier, and her aura was yellow, while she always looked sad and blue. But Yu does not listen to songs or see the colors. Suddenly, Fuka walks ahead and begins singing a song, then turns around to ask what color he saw when she was singing. Yu could not speak for a moment as her beautiful singing mesmerized him. He praised her, saying that she has the potential to be a good singer. On the other hand, she says this concert cleared up many confusions. At this point, Yu asks her to try her luck in music because that can be her thing. As Yu reaches home, he receives a call from Koyuki, who is so happy to see him at the concert. He appreciated her singing so much. His praise brought tears to her eyes, and she hung up the phone immediately. On the other hand, Fuka decides to take Yu to a shrine that her parents visited years ago to make a wish. She wants him to make a wish for her, increasing her chances of fulfilling her wish. On her way back, she shared that she wished her dream would come true, and her dream was to make music. Afterwards, she takes Mikasa and Yu to the teacher and asks permission to start a music club where she and her two friends will make music. Yu gets so confused, as she never told him he would be part of the band. On their way home, Fuka shared that Nachai was unhappy with her decision to make a band, but it would not be fair to join the track team either. Mikasa assures her that she should only do what she wants to do. Fuka revealed her dream to the teacher. They want to be a great band like Hedgehog, but to start their music career, they need musical instruments and don't have enough money. Their teacher suggests they can earn money by working at the beach house during summer break. Yu resists, but Fuka decides this for them, and they start their journey towards the beach house on the train. Fuka looks so excited, as she has never seen a beach. Mikasa has visited bears often. Instead of talking to them, Yu keeps thinking he is not doing right by coming with them. He shares that he is an introvert and doesn't know how to talk to people. Fuka does not let him complete what he is saying as they reach across the beach. She could not contain her vast excitement. They search for the address of the beach house and see a man coming out of the main gate. He quickly introduces himself as the owner, Yahagi, and awaits their arrival. He spanks Yu on the back when Yu thanks him for letting them work at his beach house. He dislikes Yahagi at first glance but forgets it and enters the beach house. It turns out that Yahagi was a drummer but did not play it in front of people. Yahagi leaves Mikasa and Yu in the same room and reminds them they must work hard starting tomorrow, so it's better to sleep early. Going out of the room, he spanks Yu's back, which greatly annoys him. The next day, they all start their duty at the beach house. Fuka and Mikasa efficiently take and deliver orders to the tables. Many girls ask him to go on a date to be a good-looking, attractive guy, but he refuses as he is not attracted to girls. Shy and confused, Yu throws the plates on the floor. He could not understand the customer's orders and took orders repeatedly, which annoyed them. He even can't repeat the order details loudly to Yahagi, which angers him so much. He asks Yu to work hard or leave the job. 
Disappointed by his day's performance, Yu tweets about Yagaga's attitude on his first day. His followers encouraged him to keep working and neglect Ihage. He misses and wants to go home. But Fuka comes at the same time and encourages him by reminding him that he is a very kind and thoughtful person. He tried to save her from the wrong guys and help her find what she wanted to do. Hence, instead of leaving, he must show resilience and prove his worth to Yahagi. Her words work like magic, and he works much better the next day. Yahagi appreciates him at the end of the day because he tried and succeeded. The hectic day tires him so much that he sleeps on Fuka's lap. On the other hand, Koyuki is on the bus, traveling towards the beach to shoot a video. Her assistant shares that she can enjoy her free time in the evening after shooting. At the same time, Yu sits with Mikasa on the beach to enjoy the time after work when Mikasa tells him that Fuka behaves differently from Yu. It's evident from her behavior that she likes him so much. Anyone can notice her behavior. Weirdly, Yu did not notice. But it does not matter until Yu has the same feeling towards her. He says that he gets up and runs towards the beach to find a good friend for himself. Soon after he goes, Fuka comes in the swimming suit and asks Yu to come with her and help her enjoy the dolphin swim. Yu feels terrible when he watches her in the swimming suit but keeps swimming anyway. He hid his feelings and asked her why she wanted them to be a part of her team when she could make solo music like Koi. She knows she can do it alone, too, but then there would be no enjoyment in making music independently. After a while, they notice that they have come too far from the beach and Fuk starts using her hands and nervousness to pedal to go back. But in that attempt, she falls from the toy dolphin. Suddenly, her leg cramps and she is unable to swim, she starts drowning. Yu immediately swam down to bring her body up. After a while, Yu opened his eyes on the beach while Fuka tried to bring him back by breathing into his mouth. She thanked God when she saw him wake up and cry so much. Unable to contain her emotions, she hugs him and cries a lot. On the other hand, Koyuki finishes her shooting and feels hungry. She looked around and saw the same beach house in front of her where Yu worked. In the meantime, Fuka and Yu return, while Yahagi notices that Yu does not look fine. Fuka does not tell him what happened with them on the beach and instead asks Yu if he is alright. But Yu is still freaked out by the fact that Fuka is breathing into his mouth, and he flinches when he finds her standing close to him. He can't look her directly in the eyes. Leaving them there, Yahagi enters as it's time to close the beach house. Fuka takes a sip from Mikasa's drink and leaves the lounge, too, while Yu remembers what happened at the beach again. Suddenly, Fuka returns to request that he not tell anyone about rescue breathing today. She also feels like it was a kiss, and although she knows what she did was to save his life, she wants him to keep this a secret. Yu feels so happy that he was not alone handling different rescue breathing. She was also acting differently. Suddenly, Mikasa saw him smiling and asked what had happened, but as he had promised to keep this a secret, he did not tell him anything and crashed on her bed in his room. The Twitter feed says Koyuki is also at the same beach for a music video shoot. She texts him that she wants to see him tonight. Soon after that, they meet across the beach. It was training, and she was already waiting for him with her umbrella. She looks so excited to see him in front of her after a long time. Koyuki knows they would have never met if their mobile phones had not connected them again. Then she brings forth a bag full of fireworks that she wants to light together. At the same time, Fuka asks Mikasa about Yu, but he does not know where he went. Mikasa notices her caring attitude towards Yu and asks if something happened between them today. She hides her feelings and leaves the room to look for Yu on the beach. On the other hand, Yu and Koyuki watch the fireworks, and she notices that he is not speaking much. While Yu could not come out with his thoughts about Fuka, he appreciates Koyuki because she has become a sensational artist in Japan and turned out to be a pretty girl as she grew up. Koyuki smiles and tells him she will always be the same Tama Chen for him. He can call me by this nickname that they used in their childhood. She asks him about their music band, as she read on Twitter that he will be a part of it. She gets sad knowing that a girl pursued him to join the band. At the same time, a strong wind takes away Koyuki's umbrella and she gets too close to Yu. It looks as if they are hugging each other. Suddenly, Fuka came there and saw Yu hugging her. Fuka stops, trying to understand, but then she turns back and runs towards the beach house. Yu tries to stop her, but at the same time, Koyuki does not leave the grip on him and hugs him even more tightly. On the other hand, Fuka returns from the beach, all soaked up. She looks so disappointed. Mikasa watches her coming in and asks if she found Yu. She says he saw him nowhere and goes inside her room, telling him she must change her clothes. Mikasa notices the change in her expression, but he remains silent. On the other hand, Koyuki apologizes for hugging him, as she did not do it deliberately. She just slipped when her umbrella flew away in the air. Then she asks about Fuka and finds out that the same girl persuaded Yu to join the music band. She hoped Fuka didn't get the wrong idea of watching them hug each other because they were nothing else but just friends. The next day, Yu sits in the beach house lounge waiting for Fuka as he wants to explain about the last night. As soon as he watches her coming, 
He gets up and tells her that what she saw last night is not what she thinks. There is nothing between him and Koyuki. He explains that she is just a friend, and he never got the chance to tell her this before. At this explanation, Fuka gets even angrier because, in her opinion, there were plenty of chances when he could say to her that she was his friend, but he chose to hide it for no reason. She runs back to her room, leaving him there. The whole day, Fuka does not listen to him at all while she casually talks with Mikasa. She eats her dinner in the room instead of sitting with them on the table. Later, Yu goes to the beach and keeps thinking about how he can fix things up between her and Fuka. On the other hand, Mikasa stops Fuka in the beach house's lounge and asks if there was a fight between her and Yu. She lies, but Mikasa says he can read her face, so she should tell him better. She only says that they had a fight but explains nothing about it. At the same time, someone randomly collides with him on the beach and he thinks it must be Fuka, but he was disappointed to see that it was some random girl on the beach. Then he decides he cannot sit idly as he misses being around her. So he goes to Fuka again to tell her about him and Koyuki. He finds her behind the beach house and tells her that he and Koyuki are childhood friends who recently reconnected through Twitter. But instead of texting from her official account, she uses her anonymous account to talk to him, which is why he did not tell her about her secret account because fans would start texting a celebrity and spamming their inbox. That angers Fuka even more than Yu thought of her as a random girl who would spam Koyuki's inbox. Yu gets so embarrassed and tries to explain, but Fuka runs inside. They don't know why everything messed up between them. The following day, Yahagi and Mikasa notice that Fuka is still angry with Yu. Suddenly, they see their teacher enter the beach house. The track team recruiter is also with them. They came here to pursue Fuka again to join the track team. He asks Yu what he thinks to ensure he is right in asking her to join the team. But before Yu could speak, Mikasa came there and explained that it would not benefit the track team if Fuka joined it without interest. It would not yield bad results, and he must agree. Fuka gets so angry at the stubbornness of the track team guy and firmly tells him that she has decided once and for all that she will only make music and make a great band like Hedgehog. Makoto smiles and says that each time she listens, her praising the Hedgehog makes her blush. And they don't know, but she was the keyboardist in the band. The guy beside her was a guitarist, and Yahagi was a drummer. That fact surprises them so much, but Fuka and Yu are sulking, so they hide it from them. Besides, they are big Hedgehog fans, and they fail to notice them. They say that they listen to their songs every day. And for a while, Yu and Fuka see each other as if they forgot the misunderstandings between them. But the anger builds up in Fuka immediately, and she turns her head away. Makoto shares that they look different now, but Yu wants to know where Tama and Nico are now. They share that Tama has disappeared, and Nico is searching for her. That is why they do different things in life but know that Tama and Nico will eventually return. Fuka turns to Yahagi and orders him to teach them now and help them become as good as Hedgehog. The track team guy cannot bear all the conversation and convinces Fuka that she should leave the madness about making the music because she has no talent. Besides, it isn't easy to become a good band. Seeing him humiliating Fuka, Yu tells him she is good at singing, as he saw her singing a while ago. Nico suggests that instead of arguing, they should give her a chance to prove her singing. All the Hedgehog members sit with their musical instruments to listen to Fuka while Yahagi asks Yu to play guitar. He explains that this was Nico's nas, but now that he is not here, Yu can use it. Later, he tells Mikasa that he tried to sort things out between her and Fuka, but she does not want to listen. Without her, he is not enjoying the time on the beach, and there is no happiness in life. Mikasa encourages him to tell Fuka that and not let pride come his way. Also, Fuka wants to apologize, but she is hesitant. He leaves two of them alone. Fuka heard their conversation and looked at him. She thanks him for taking her side in front of the track team recruiter and runs away. The band sits with their instruments, and Fuka starts singing the song. She sings boldly with all her heart. It mesmerizes the band to hear her mature voice, and Yu imagines herself as a pretty swan with white wings. Her voice reaches Koyuki and her team, but they do not stop as they are packing to leave the town after recording the video. However, Koyuki and her team recognize that the song is the famous hedgehog track. The people on the beach wonder if there is an event and rush to listen to the music. On the other hand, the track team recruiter enjoys her singing, too. The song ends, and Fuka sees many people standing before her, appreciating. She asks Yahagi about her singing, who lies and says she has a rough talent but can surely improve. The track team guy also lies that he didn't enjoy it, but Mikasa watched him tap his feet on the rhythm. He confesses that he taps the feet out of habit as a drummer for the band. Fuko immediately decides that he will be their drummer. Later, Yahagi winks that he did not praise her, which will give her a big head. Makoto is so happy that adding a genius singer will make this band great. Yu sees Fuka sitting alone on the beach that night and joins her. She wants to enjoy the view of the mountains before leaving tomorrow. After a while, she feels cold and shares Yu's coat. 
He tries to take a nice picture of the starry sky but cannot capture the beauty as it is so dark. Suddenly, he felt awkward being so close to her and asked to go back to the beach house. He tries to get up, and in that attempt, he pushes Fuka, who throws her headphones aside, and he ends up falling on top of her. After returning from the beach house, Yu invites Koyuki to his home. They watch their old pictures and revive the memories from those days. Besides, they were living nearby, so they recently found that out. They see a picture of their trip to the ocean where Koyuki looks angry at Yu. He remembers that she used to scold him frequently. Even though, as a kid, he used to tell her that it was not pleasant to do that. But she won't listen. On the contrary, Koyuki denies that she only wishes she ate adequately and did things correctly. To look at the pictures, Koyuki gets a bit closer, and her beautiful hair strikes his forehead. They see a picture where they are making snowmen together. He remembers that it was the day he watched her for the last time before she disappeared. But he understands that she might not get the chance to say goodbye. He admits he was a sensitive baby back then but must confess that he liked her. Suddenly, Koyuki was startled to hear this, and to clear the awkwardness between them, Yu tried to tell her that he only had feelings back then. But before he could explain, Koyuki immediately left his home. Yu regrets saying that, as she is a prominent celebrity now, and she may think that he was hitting on her. On the other hand, Koyuki stops on the road with tears in her eyes. She is so happy that she is not alone in her feelings. The next day, their classmates welcome each other back to school after a summer break. Nachai is still not comfortable with being part of the band now instead of being part of the track team. Mikasa already sees the drumsticks in his bags and knows Nachai secretly wants to be in the music band. While walking with them, Yu constantly thinks about Koyuki. He believes he should not have said that he liked her last night. Suddenly, many girls see them together and gossip that Nachai and Mikasa are now couples. Yu overhears their conversation and tries to tell the girls that he is not what they think. But Mikasa makes his position awkward by telling the girls he is after cute Yu. The girls understand that they are a love triangle and giggle. Yu gets so annoyed. And at the same time, Fuka comes running and spanks him. She shared that she enjoyed her stay at Beach House. They met the people of Hedgehog and did their first concert at the beach. She loves those moments, but Yu reminds her that all the memories are not pleasant, as she even drowned once trying to swim in the sea. Fuka remembers their rescue kiss, and Mikasa looks at them as if he never knew that happened. But in Fuka's opinion, that, too, was a good memory. Later, Fuka tells them in the canteen that Hedgehog band members have allowed them to use their studio, so they can practice as long as they want whenever the studio is free. After taking their food, they look for an empty table, and Fuka shares her plan that, for now, they will use Hedgehog's instruments and eventually buy them. They see a table occupied by one girl and ask permission to join her at the table. That pretty girl turned her head towards them, and instead of refusing to join them, she silently left the table. As she walks away, Fuka appreciates how pretty and tall she is. After school, they reach Hedgehog's studio and try their hands on the instruments. Hedgehog's guitarist asks them to play music so he can judge their potential. Each of them plays the instrument so badly that he must stop them. Yu does not know anything about bass, and Mikasa seems to forget all about playing the piano. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door, and other band members tell her they can't work with Sarah anymore. Upon asking, he says Sarah is his sister, who has been fired from many bands for being non-communicative. Even though she is an exceptional guitarist, people don't like her for being so silent. They see the same tall girl they saw in the canteen through the window. Fuka opens the door, and Fuka falls on Sarah after tripping on a wire. At the same time, Fuka asks Sarah to be their guitarist. Sarah bangs the guitar on Yu's face and then turns towards Fuka to tell her that she accepts her offer. Sarah thinks that Yu is some pervert, but Sarah's brother feels terrible for him and asks if he is okay. He says with anger that he is not okay at all. They take Sarah along with them to the practice room, and for the first time, he takes brass lessons. Meanwhile, Sarah stares at Yu angrily, and he also looks back at her. Her brother stops her from being rude. At the same time, it's already too late, so they decide to go home. But Fuka suggests that since it's their first training day together, they should have dinner to celebrate. Nachai feels annoyed when Fuka calls him their leader. She invites Sarah to join them, too, and she agrees. At the dinner, Fuka suggests Climbers High be their first track. But Sarah disagrees, as Yu has not learned anything about playing brass yet, and that song has a problematic brass part. Yu gets angry that Sarah has repeatedly pointed him out and argues that he has refused to be the bass player. Mikasa cheers him up and says he will learn soon, but his anger rises. Fuka gets up from her seat as she has to leave quickly. Mikasa and Nachai go, too, for an urgent reason, which leaves Sarah and Yu alone at the table. Yu asks her if she has to order something to end the awkwardness between them. And to his surprise, she ordered dessert and a fruit shake. After a while, Yu and Sarah pick up their phones. Yu reads a tweet from his follower, Admiral, saying she is out having fun. 
but he tweets that he is stuck with a scary girl and terrified to communicate. Admiral tweets that he should try to talk, and Yu apologizes for what happened between them at the studio, but he notices that Sarah keeps using her phone. Suddenly, he sees the Admiral tweets the same picture of Sheikh before him. That means the Admiral on Twitter is Sarah. He tells Sarah that it is him she is talking to. She gets so happy that Yu is her Twitter friend and starts talking randomly excitedly. She is glad that she just called him a friend in the tweet. On their way back home, Sarah confesses that she wanted to apologize for banging the guitar in his face earlier in the studio, and she felt terrible when her brother talked inappropriately with him. And when she said that the brass part is hard in the song, she genuinely thought it would be challenging for a beginner. Sometimes, she cannot communicate properly, and people get the wrong idea about what she says. That was why she was also kicked out of the other band. Yua smiles and shares that he also just likes her, but now he welcomes her as his bandmate. She talks so much on their way back. On the other hand, Fuka goes to the bookshop and gets a book about music. Mikasa calls Mukoto to tell him that he will play the keyboard in the band, even though his father used to oppose it before. Own Nachai also takes out his drumsticks to get ready for the practice. Yu returns home and starts brass practicing. The next day, he gets up early, even though it's a week. When his baby sister learns that he is a part of a music band, he excitedly screams to tell other sisters. On his way to the studio, Yu finds Sarah and they start walking together. It irritates him that people look at him as if he has a musical instrument on his back. Sarah tries to cheer him up by saying it looks cool, but he gets more annoyed. Fuka, Mikasa, and Nachai are already at the studio and are worried that the studio is all booked for the day, so there is no chance they can practice here. Sarah wants to talk out with someone to get a room for practice, but Yu stops her. It surprises Makoto that Yu is comfortable talking to her. Then Nachai tells them to come with him to his home if they want to practice. They are surprised to see all the musical instruments covered with clothes in his garage. Nachai shares that his brother used to practice with his band here. He had not told them before, as he did not want to look so interested. Suddenly, his grandmother comes to ask if they want anything to eat. Nachai sends her away, telling her that they are just fine. Then, they all get set to practice. Fuka sings the song, and their practice goes well. After the song ended, Fuka excitedly thanked Sarah for joining their band. Before Sarah could appreciate you for playing brass well, Fuka told him. So Sarah keeps silent. She pushes him with her guitar, and Yuu does not understand why she did that. Fuka tells them to get ready as they will sing their first song at the school fair. Yu feels so good to be a part of a music band for the first time. Koyuki records her latest song in the studio. The recording room is full of staff, and they discuss that her vocals are not as sensational today as before. After the recording, Koyuki leaves in her car with her assistant, who tells her that the recording went well, but now she has to prepare for today's busy schedule. She has to give interviews to many magazines and attend a concert planning meeting, but she is immersed in her thoughts of the day when she met you at her home, and he told her that he loved her back then, but he was never able to say to them. Dragging herself into the everyday busy routine and unable to meet you, it feels like someone is pulling her away from him. This feeling was similar when she parted ways with you in childhood. In their childhood, she once mocked you for being afraid of climbing on a high ladder. Suddenly, she feels pain in the finger, and as soon as he sees her finger bleeding, he quickly begins coming down from the ladder. She tells him nothing to worry about, but you does not listen and puts a bandage around her finger to prevent infection. She is adventurous, unlike you, and she urges him to come to the tunnel with her, after trying to stop her repeatedly. He follows her when Yu sees that she is going inside the tunnel anyway. After their adventurous evening, they say goodbye and decide to make a secret hideout tomorrow for both of them. Poyuki sees him entering his home, and his mom gets annoyed seeing him come so late and have dirt all over his clothes. That night, Koyuki hears the louder sounds of her parents from the other room. Her mother accuses her father of not working hard and putting their child's responsibility on her, while her father argues that he is doing what he can. That sound makes her sad, and she silently cries in bed. The next day, she sits silently with Yu in the park. Yu notices that she does not want to go home, while Koyuki fears returning to her messed up home. She tells him that she wishes that snow would fall this year. Yu hopes that the snow will fall after the colder winters this year, and if it does, he will make a snowman in an igloo. That immediately cheers her up, and she starts singing. The beautiful song mesmerizes him, and when she stops, he compliments her voice, saying that it is so beautiful, just like the lead vocalist of the band Hedgehog named Tama, but his favorite is Nico. They plan to make a band one day, where she will sing and you will play bass like Nico. They will be like Tama and Nico. They make a promise to fulfill their dream one day. A couple of days later, Koyuki goes home so excited after school. It was her birthday, and her parents had promised to take her out. That night, she saw snow in the town for the first time. 
But the next day, when Yu called her name to stop her, she did not stop and silently walked beside the secret spot beside the tunnel. She had tears all over her face, and she recalls what her parents told her last night. Her father and mother had decided to part ways, and she would stay with her mom at her grandpa's home in Tokyo. The thought of leaving Yu made her so sad. On her way home, Yu runs towards her and grabs her hand to show her something he made for her. She sees that he made two snowmen, as promised. He looks happy when she smiles and says she looks so pretty with a happy face. At this point, Koyuki could not stop her tears and began crying so loud. Yu could not understand what happened to her. Then, she leaves the town with her mother without saying goodbye. She is afraid that she will once again break into tears after seeing him. In fact, she promises to try to become stronger and always smile just as Yu likes her. The scene shifts when she sits in her room and watches her latest song on DVD. In the next meeting, she wants to tell him that she has become stronger than before. So to meet her, she takes a ticket for her upcoming concert from her assistant and wants to give it to her in person. It's raining, and she stops in front of Yu's home with an umbrella. After ringing the doorbell many times, no one comes out. It turns out that no one is at home. She tries to look at the wall on the other side when Yu calls her name. She gets confused, as it seems like she is sneaking into his house. Soon, they sit inside the house in front of each other. After apologizing for not informing him before coming here, she gives him a ticket to the concert and insists he come. Afterwards, she finally gets the courage to tell him that she could not get the courage to contact him before for fear that he might hate her. That surprised Yu because that's what he thought. He used to think she would hate him if he emailed or texted her to connect. Koyuki gets so angry that he wonders how he can feel like that. At a moment when Yu promises that he will come to the concert, her anger fades and she excitedly starts telling him about her upcoming song. When she puts her hand in the bag to take out the DVD, Yu tells her they have also made a band with the girl she saw on the beach. Koyuki stops when she hears that Yu is seeing that girl, but Yu does not notice and keeps telling her they had fun at the beach concert and are about to perform at school. Unable to hear their details, Koyuki interrupts her by getting up and telling her she must leave now as she is getting late for somewhere. Yu comes with her to say goodbye and wishes that she should have stayed longer. That way, she would meet his sisters, too. But now he is so glad that they are friends. Koyuki hesitantly asks if they can revive their old promise to perform on the same stage one day. Yu happily revives the promise, and Koyuki leaves for home. On her way back home, Koyuki is so surprised at herself that she wonders why she is doing all this. Suddenly, a bus splashes mud all over her clothes. A girl ran after the bus to reprimand the driver for recklessly driving. Koyuki sees that the girl is Fuka. Fuka gets so happy to see the famous singer Koyuki in front of her. As Fuka lives above a bathhouse, she takes her home and gives her clean laundry to change her muddy clothes and wash herself up. Koyuki still doesn't understand why she came here instead of taking a taxi and returning home. Fuka did not give her a chance to say anything and grabbed her arm to take her home. Running so fast, she reached home, and now Koyuki is bathing at this bathhouse. When she enters the hot bath, Fuka comes running as an expert and tells her she should not use a towel. She helps her clean her body first, and then she washes herself too. She loves Koyuki's long hair, while Koyuki appreciates her clear skin. Afterwards, they sat in the swimming pool, and Koyuki thanked her for saving them from trouble. But Fuka excitedly says that she always wanted to talk to her, so it would be a pleasure if she did something for her. She also wants her to sign a CD. Koyuki agrees, and Fuka starts telling her that all her songs are sensational, and she also wants to write the music for their performance at school. She will make a big difference if she knows how to write a song that connects to hearts. Fuka feels that her songs are not only sad, but they also show that in that sheer sadness, she does not stop caring for the person she loves. Koyuki confesses that it happens automatically, as she always writes songs keeping in mind the person she loved from childhood. That is one-sided love, but she wishes she would one day tell him. She wants to know if Fuka loves someone. Fuka tells her that she has never been in love. Koyuki feels a sigh of relief that Fuka and you are not in love, and today her doubts are clear. But Fuka wants to know how to be in love and have those cute feelings. Koyuki thanks Fuka and starts walking towards home. They practice the music in the garage. Afterwards, everyone gets tired, but Yu still requests that they practice again. Later, on the way back home, Fuka shared that she met Koyuki on the road and had a bath together. She appreciates Koyuki even more, as she is a really lovely person. Suddenly, Yu tries to tell Koyuki that she came to visit him too, but before he can tell her, she crosses the road and goes ahead. Yu's eyes open the following day when his sister came into the room, trying to show him something on Twitter. The picture where they promised to perform together on stage had gone viral as someone had secretly taken their picture when Koyuki visited him. Her sisters are so angry at him for not being discreet when meeting a celebrity, as it will tarnish her reputation now. Yu is so confused and nervous about the new problem, 
As he opened the door of his class that day, the whole class hovered to ask him about his relationship with Koyuki, but his eyes only look for Fuka, who runs away from the class. At the same time, the teacher comes in, and the class begins. On the other hand, Koyuki's agency representative reprimanded her for going out carelessly. She scolds her, saying that it's against the agency's policy and she has to act on what they say, as many lives are connected to what she does in her life. She tells Koyuki to act responsibly and deny on social media that someone else is in the picture. She assures me that even then, she is free to be with anyone she wants, but she must be careful. On the other hand, Yu comes to the spot where he can find Fuka, and she is already there listening to Koyuki's music with her headphones on. She remembers how Koyuki shared that she always writes songs keeping in mind the person she loves. Yu comes up the stairs even though he is afraid of heights. He starts talking to clarify his side by saying that whoever posted the picture posted it online using a verified Twitter account. Fuka keeps staring at her for a while without any emotion on her face. She is not interested in any details. Yu cheers up, as she does not mind seeing Koyuki and him together. She tells him that she has no words to say. But Yu apologizes anyway, saying he never told her about meeting Koyuki. Fuka finally reveals her anger that he could have told her about his meeting like she did when she and Koyuki bathed together. She yells at him when he tries to tell him that she only came to give her the concert tickets. But then Fuka accepts his apology with a kind heart because there will be a huge day tomorrow, and they have no time to spoil their moods before that. She asks him about how Koyuki is now, because such pictures can ruin her reputation as a celebrity. Yu had no idea about it. Then Fuka tells him she is in a hurry and quickly goes towards the classroom. On the other hand, Koyuki reads Yu's apology tweet, where he tells her fans that they are just friends and apologizes if he hurts Koyuki's fans' feelings. Afterwards, Koyuki attends a show where she announces her upcoming song, Snowflakes. She shares that the song is so close to her heart, as she has personal experience attached to it. In front of the whole media, she reveals that all her song lyrics are written in the unrequited love of a childhood friend. She loves him, but this love is one-sided. She has recently met him through Twitter and has started going out. The agency representative looks worried, as announcing her relationship publicly is inappropriate. On the other hand, Mikasa stops Yu in the school corridor and shows him Koyuki's video. She further shares in the video that they are not in a relationship or dating, as her love is one-sided, and she has put all her feelings about him in the new song, Snow Fireworks. Yu and his band gather in the garage. They are all nervous about their performance, but Yu is not out of Koyuki's media talk. Makota and Sarah try to cheer him up by saying that their concert will be filled with more people after all this, and he doesn't need to worry about random people. Fuka encourages him that if Koyuki reveals her feelings about him, then there is nothing wrong with it, so they all decide to leave what happened behind and concentrate on their performance. Makota is so nervous, as he never thought he would be a part of a music band, and he is now a band leader. He rolls on the floor all over the place, thinking that maybe he can quit before the concert, but he can't. On the other hand, Sarah sits sadly outside the studio when her brother arrives. She wants to do something for the band. This is the first band telling her she belongs to them. She doesn't know what will happen tomorrow, but she wants to save them from humiliation. Her brother shares his experience. People threw bottles at them at their first performance, but he saved his band by playing guitar. Sarah starts practicing, as she knows how to speak to the audience. At the same time, Yu sits at home and still cannot understand why Koyuki shared all the details in front of the media when she would put her career on slack. He remembers his promise to perform with him on stage together. Suddenly, his sister Meyer entered the room and told him she would attend the concert with other sisters, and he must know that they are his fans no matter what, and they will stay till the end of the concert no matter what. He receives a message from Yahagi that he will also come to the concert with his friend. Yu thinks he must not let himself be so occupied with useless thoughts about what happened today on Twitter. Instead, he must perform best with those who have always encouraged him. So he picks up the mobile and tells Yahagi he will do his best. Finally, it's concert day, and the hall is more crowded than ever. Fuka remembers when Koyuki told her that all her songs were about her childhood love, and she had already promised Koyuki that she would be rooting for her passion. Standing atop the building, she listens to the song when Yu finds her there. At the same time, Koyuki changes her appearance and secretly enters the school to listen to Yu's concert today. She is surprised that there are rumors that she will come to see Yu's performance. Suddenly, many guys started shouting, assuming Koyuki was in the audience. Now Koyuki thinks that maybe it was a bad idea to come there. She hears some people say that Yu is a fool and that he is not expressing his love for her in return. All the crowds demand an apology from him. At the same time, his sister gets so angry at the insensitive crowd. While backstage, Nachai tries to lift Yu's spirit, saying he knew this would happen. Now, he wants to see the reason why he is sad. The bassist must be in his complete form. 
Yu apologizes that it happened, but he is excited about the performance. He feels happy being on stage and is not scared of what will happen today. And it's all because of them, as all his friends make him feel great. Then, finally, they decide to perform as a team and ask Yu to keep his chin up. After joining their hands, they arrive on stage and grab the instruments. The crowd screamed in anger to bring out the bassist. At the same time, it is so terrifying for Koyuki to see the angry crowd. But walking towards the stage, Yu feels stronger than ever as he is with these great people who are his friends. He feels like he can conquer the world if he is with them. The crowd demands an apology from him, but they are all set to sing no matter what. As soon as Fuka tells him to get ready to sing, one in the crowd throws a bottle towards Yu, injuring his forehead. It also damages the musical instrument in his hand. Suddenly, a person is about to throw another bottle at Yu when his sister comes to stop that guy angry. Now, the crowd knows that Yu's family is also here, hence, they decide to let their anger out on them. A guy grabs his sister's fist and starts humiliating her. Koyuki could not bear this, and she removed her gown and shouted that it was her that they needed to punish. Yu is so surprised to see her, and the crowd squeezes her between them. He could not stop himself and was about to save her, but Makoto stopped him as he could do nothing right now. The concert is live telecast, and people enjoy the chaos. Her agency owners see what's happening at the concert on TV, and immediately decide to take action. Suddenly, the lights turn off, and then the spotlights on the stage turn on. The music begins, and Fuka starts singing on the perfect beat with her mesmerizing voice. Everyone stops then and there as if they never expected them to be so good. Sarah's brother feels proud of his sister, while Yahagi sits backstage and listens to them. As an expert, he knows that they are losing the rhythm sometimes. The song Fly in the Sky lifts the audience spirit so high, and as soon as the song ends, they receive a huge shout out. Everyone claps as the song is wonderful. At the song's end, Fuka extends her hand and asks Koyuki to come on stage and sing with her. They decided to sing an old song by the Hedgehog Music Band. Singing together, they have a natural chemistry, which is fantastic. Yu can see his two favorite people singing on stage together. He remembers when, in their childhood, Koyuki sang that song in the park. At the song's end, the audience appreciates them with a huge shout out. Fuka thanked her, as she enjoyed singing with Koyuki a lot. But Koyuki assures that Fuka, too, is a fantastic singer. Then she turned towards the audience and apologized if her earlier statement hurt their sentiments. But she wants to tell them that her feelings are unrelated to bassist Yu and his family, so they can blame her if she hurts them. A girl from the audience shouts that she did nothing but express her feelings for someone she loves and should not bother anyone, and she should not apologize. Then, all the audience members assure her that they are rooting for her. Fuka takes the mic and starts the next song. After the concert, they all celebrate their success in the cafe. To their amazement, Yu played so well. Suddenly, Yu asks Fuka about the man she met after the concert. She shared that the man wanted to know the name of the band, but they have not decided on a name yet. Yu suggested a name, but Mikasa started juggling with the words and came up with Fall Moon. Fuka disagrees, but then she calms down. Makoto checks his phone, and their concert has gotten many views. They are worried about Koyuki, as some guy from her agency took her after the concert. After all, she is not as accessible in her decisions as they are. On the other hand, Koyuki had to visit the agency office, where the representative told her that the agency president was furious, but she managed to calm him down. She has to act discreetly for now, as they cannot afford to put her in danger, and more importantly, she would not touch the guy Yu for some time. That will settle the rumors. Koyuki feels enslaved, but she can't do anything. That night, she did not pick up Yu's call. The next day, Nachai asks if she received Yu's call, but sadly, she is not in contact with him or anyone else, which is worrying. Suddenly, Sarah reads the news that, after her performance yesterday, her TV shows and events were cancelled for unknown reason. They feel so sad for her. On the other hand, Koyuki sees that on her calendar, there is only one event left, the Christmas concert. At the same time, she receives Yu's call, but she does not answer his call. After a while, she goes to the rehearsal for the concert and decides to make the event memorable for the people who love her singing. Koyuki gets ready to sing in the studio with all her passion as she wants to sing for the people who love her singing, but she could not sing on the mic. She tries once more, but her vocals are not working. Her team takes her to the hospital, and the doctor tells her that she is under a lot of stress, which is why she should rest for a while. Also, their president wants her to take off for quite some time. As Koyuki comes out of the hospital, she checks her phone, which has received plenty of missed calls from Yu. He is worried about her. Some random girls passing by talk about her upcoming Christmas concert and are excited, but they didn't know she would be unable to sing now for quite some time. Her car's door opens, and the assistant sits with her to go home. 
Once again, Yu calls her, but she does not answer. On the other hand, Yu can't understand why Koyuki is not picking up the call until his little sister tells him it's all over the internet now that Koyuki's concerts are cancelled. They announced that she was not well and they would reschedule everything. He remembers Koyuki was excited about the Christmas concert and came to give him the ticket. On the other hand, Koyuki takes the subway to go home, but she stops by the beach. Walking there, she finally receives Yu's call. He wants to know where she is and how her health is. But noticing the tone of her voice, he understands that something is incorrect. He hangs up the phone and starts running towards the train station. He hardly reaches the train in time. But this time, he doesn't want to leave Koyuki alone like he did in childhood. Now, he can do something for her, finally finding where he expected her to be. It's snowing, and he finds her standing alone on the beach. She shares that she will not be able to sing now, although she hopes she will get fine. Koyuki apologizes to him for loving him. Unable to control her overwhelming emotions, she starts crying. But then Yu hugged her tightly. After a few days, Koyuki meets Yu at the train station, and they start exploring a town where she has come before for shooting. It's called Tiny Tokyo, and they are on a date here. But that was not what Yu expected as their date point. Koyuki understands that people prefer going to cinemas and museums, but she likes this place better. She hoped that Yu was not getting bored here, but suddenly, she pushed Yu with her as she wanted to show him something. They reach the big bell in the famous town, which is famous. This bell rings only four times a day, and any couple who listens to it together remains always connected. That surprises Yu, as he has not yet considered their relationship from this angle. But Koyuki cheers him up by telling him that she is kidding. They hear the bell ringing, and Koyuki grabs his hand in hers. They take a walk in the town while she shares that her voice is much better now. But she confesses that this little break has made her realize she loves her job. Yu smiles, as he has no idea what loving a job feels like. But in Koyuki's opinion, if they take their band professionally, that will become his job, too. You just don't want to have such high hopes for their band yet. But Koyuki reminds him that he must keep working as he still has to fulfill his childhood promise to perform on stage with her. They reach a restaurant that Koyuki has already visited, as she was invited to leave a review. The food was excellent, and Yu saw her autograph hanging on the wall. He keeps staring as he still can't believe his childhood friend has become a celebrity. But Koyuki loves those innocent moments more than these days. She shares that she acted recklessly in the last few days by only thinking about herself. That's why she messed everything up for Yu and her manager. But her fans' love has encouraged her, and now she wants to sing forever. And it all happened because Yu helped her and is with her now. She wishes he would be there for her forever. They say goodbye at the station while Koyuki covers her face with masks to hide her identity. Yu was initially worried, but Koyuki assured her she would be safe. Afterwards, Yu immediately takes the train to reach the scheduled rehearsal. He knows he is late, but he can't tell Fuka because she has no cell phone. He knows that everyone will be waiting for him. He reaches there and rushes to grab the musical instrument. But Nachai is so angry at him for keeping them waiting for so long. Sarah shared that she was worried as if he were okay. But when Nachai does not stop getting angry at him, she puts his heel on his feet and he begins screaming. Yu apologizes to everyone and asks why Fuka is so calm. She asks everyone to start already, as they are so late. After the rehearsal, they tell him about Nachai's friend's music club, where his friend wants them to perform with other bands. They accepted the offer, and Nachai was too excited to hear when Fuka suggested they make their original song. But they doubt it when Fuka says that she will write the music. They want to listen to what she can write, but she promises to complete the lyrics in time. Nachai asks her to write something extraordinary. They all begin to brainstorm ideas about what their first song should be. After quite a while of discussion, Yu receives Koyuki's call. He excitedly told her they were working on their band's first song, and Fuka would write it. But unfortunately, she has not come up with any lyrics except for humming to the beat. Koyuki has to talk about the day but realizes it's not a good time now as Yu is attending a band meeting. But she thanks him for being there when she needed him, as she is feeling better because of him. At the same time, Fuka comes out of the restaurant and sees Yu talking on the phone. At the same time, Yu hangs up the call. Afterwards, Fuka tries to write the lyrics, but she can only think of a tune. She gets tired and starts thinking that Yu is on a date with Koyuki. And later, he is also on the phone with him. To stop thinking about it, she changes the place and comes outside. But the thoughts do not leave her. She remembers her promise to Koyuki that she would help her unite with the love of her life. Fuka is trying his best to help Koyuki. On the other hand, Yu practices playing bass all the time in his room. Suddenly, he finds the phone charm that Fuka gave him. He almost forgot about them, but now he wishes Fuka wrote an excellent song for the band. Fuka tries to erase all her thoughts and enters Nachai's garage to show what she has saved on her device. But it's nothing except the tune up until now. They complain that there are no lyrics, but Fuka assures them that she will write them in time. 
Mikasa and Sarah start working on the melody and chords right away. After a few days, they are done composing the music, but the lyrics writing work is still pending. Sarah does not want to rush her, but she reminds her that there is not much time left. But Yu relaxes her, telling her that she should focus on writing about what she loves. Fuka feels a bit burdened by their expectations. On their way back home, Sarah shares her brother's thoughts that she loved the music of their song. The praise from a senior artist makes Fuka so happy. While she appreciates Yu for improving so much as a bass player, it is evident that he is working hard and practicing so much. Yu just want to be as good as the rest of his band. Fuka begins by joking that he talks like a responsible grown-up, but then she stops and promises to write the lyrics on time. But her friends know that she will soon come up with great lyrics. But Mikasa feels that she is not acting like her usual self. That night, she tries writing lyrics until late. On the other hand, Yu receives a call from Koyuki and shares that they are working on a new song. But Fuka has not completed her lyrics yet. Koyuki stops for a bit to think about something. Then, she asks Yu if she wants to meet him. Knowing that he has practiced tomorrow evening, she assures him she will not take much longer and hangs up the call. On the other hand, Fuka remembers that Koyuki writes songs keeping in mind her thoughts about her love. She only writes what she wants to tell him. Suddenly, someone comes to meet her. It's Makoto who is here to meet her with another man. He heard her song in the video that went viral after their first show. As a music producer, he wants to hire her because he believes her voice is better than Koyuki's. That's what he felt when they shared the concert stage. But he only wants her alone. He is not there to hire her band either, as he encourages her that she is meant to be a celebrity. But Fuka tells him immediately that she will not leave her band members. That's what Makoto-san told him before, but the music producer asks her to give it a second. Fuka leaves the restaurant, telling him that she will not contact him. On her way to the garage, she sees Koyuki and Yu taking pictures together. She immediately hides behind a bush and does not understand why her heart thrashes when she watches them together. Fuka hears them planning to go somewhere. She does not like it and runs towards the garage for today's practice. Mikasa notices her worried expression and asks, but she smiles as if nothing happened. At the same time, Yu comes running into the room. Nachai grabs him as he guesses that Yu is on a date again and starts joking lightly. Fuka keeps staring at him sadly. Before they can start rehearsal, Nachai wants to know if Fuka has progressed in writing the song's lyrics, but she nods in embarrassment that she has yet to do this. Mikasa knows something is bothering Fuka, and he defends her by telling Nachai that he should not ask her about the lyrics at all. That way, he is putting pressure on her unintentionally, which is terrible for her creativity. Nachai smiles as he just asks it out of habit and wants things lined up ahead of time. Also, it's his way of being concerned, but Sarah tells him he is not so good at it. Whatever Nachai says, it looks like he is throwing stones at another person. Yu leaves them arguing with each other and wants to know if something is bothering Fuka. He walks to her and asks if he can be of any help. Even though he admits he has no experience writing a song, as a friend, he can do anything she wants. Fuka, who is already irritated and under pressure after these arguments and watching Yu with Koyuki, could not control herself and began shouting at Yu to leave her alone. It surprises Yu what happened to her. On the other hand, Yu's sisters watch Koyuki sing a song on TV talking about Yu and Koyuki being boyfriends and girlfriends, respectively. They never thought that their baby brother would be the boyfriend of a celebrity. They know that their childhood friendship bond is winning over. On top of it, Koyuki's powerful love has attracted Yu towards her. But they are so proud that their baby brother is enjoying his peak youth days as he should by being in love with a beautiful girl and being a part of a music band. In all these times, Yu has changed so much. At the same time, Yu sits in his room and practices bass while he realizes that Fuka's reaction to his offer to help was so unexpected. After thinking that, he picks up his phone to ask why she is so stressed. He calls her at her landline, as she has no cell phone. He nervously asks her about today, saying he did not mean to hurt her, but he thinks that asking about the lyrics was so insensitive. He wants to apologize if it hurts her. Fuka throws herself on the bed, as she also doesn't know what's in her heart or why she acted rudely. But Yu tells her to stay relaxed and work at her own pace. He realizes he is not saying anything but repeating his words and wasting Fuka's time. But Fuka assures him there is no need to apologize, as his words do not hurt her. Fuka looks at the phone charm they won together and hangs up the call. After the call, she thinks that it hurts her more when Yu is so good and caring towards her. Fuka decided to stay in the band the following day, so she threw that music company's business card. At the same time, when Yu is getting ready to leave for school, he receives Koyuki's call that she has a song recording. But between the schedules, she plans to visit them and listen to their new song. But Yu shares that their song lyrics are not done yet. That's unbelievable for Koyuki, as it's taking her so much time. Yu suddenly remembers that Koyuki wrote her song lyrics, so she can be of some help to Fuka. But Koyuki shares that she has a different way of writing. 
Fuka's writing strategy would differ, so she doesn't think she can help. It's annoying for you that he has no idea about lyric writing, so he cannot help her either. Koyuki confesses that she writes her song lyrics by keeping in mind the person she loves. But Fuka told her that she had no one in her life. That startled you, and he understood what she was trying to say. After hanging up the call, Koyuki feels powerless about the intensity of her love for you. On the other hand, Fuka thinks about what Koyuki told her. It's about how she writes lyrics by keeping the person she loves in her mind. Now, she understands what one-sided love does to a person. These feelings are so overwhelming that she wishes she had never known them. After the bath, she gets ready and tries to write lyrics once more. The next day, she stands in her favorite spot in the school and admits that the feelings of love are very familiar now, and she knows that she loves you a lot. Tears fall from her eyes, and at the same time, she hears you calling her. Yu comes down and gives him her headphones. She asks her to listen to the lyrics. Yu feels so excited that she has finally written them down. She puts her headphones on his ear. Yu feels so happy after hearing them, as he loves the lyrics. At the same time, the rest of the band members come there. Nanchai feels so excited that the lyrics are finally complete, and he rushes forward to take a headphone from Yu. But Sarah puts her foot on his to stop and make him watch that Yu is listening now, so he should wait for his turn. Yu excitedly asks her to start practicing right away, but only Fuka knows that his smile is killing her. Later, listening to the song recording, Fuka promises to make this performance a great memory. Yu's sisters tell him that they will come on his performance day, but Yu does not want them to spare time for him. They ask him if Koyuki will be there. Yu has no idea, but his sisters know Koyuki will be there. Nachai's grandmother stops him before leaving for a performance and wishes him luck. Mikasa goes home to meet his father, while his sister looks so happy to see him. Her father is a wealthy man who wants him to stop getting music gigs and start doing something else in his life. He does not invite him. Instead, his father warns him that he will disown him if he does not leave the music, and he is only allowed in the house if he immediately quits the music. Mikasa knew that he would face this cold attitude. Like many years, he once again repeated that he would do what he liked and leave the house. His sister keeps stopping him, but he does not stay any longer. Sarah says goodbye to his brother, and as she leaves, he feels so happy to see that she adjusted so well to this band. It's like home to her now, but whatever it is, he is so pleased for her. As she leaves, Hihagi enters the studio and says that someone has come to meet him. He sees that Tama and Nico from the band Hedgehog have returned. He wants to know where they went and why they disappeared for so long. Tama apologizes for remaining disconnected for a while. Fuka hurriedly walks on the road to reach the performance venue in time. But when she gets to the other side, she notices that the phone charm she won with Yu has fallen. The signal turns red at the same time, but she does not care and runs to get it. Suddenly, a fast truck approaches her. At the same time, everyone arrives at the venue and wonders why Fuka is so late. Fortunately, the truck stopped at a distance from her, but in that attempt, the phone charm broke on the road. The truck driver scolds her for trying to cross the road recklessly, but then she gets up and hurriedly leaves for the studio. She enters the studio running and prepares for a fantastic performance that remains in the audience's hearts for years. First, they start the song Climbers while Tama and Nico from Hedgehog watch the performance of their original track. They met a teacher who was a part of their band. She feels so happy to see the whole band after so many years. They admit that Fuka's singing is so incredible. Nico sees the bass in Yu's hand and asks Yuhagi why he lent it to him. He said that bass was getting dust after he left this place, so he decided to give it to this new guy. The song ends, and they start the original track of their newly formed band, Fallen Moon. The song begins, and the lyrics are all about Fuka's unrequited love. Kiyuki hears the song in the audience. The whole crowd shouted as they loved the song. The show was a huge success, which is why they received another offer to perform at the end. Sarah feels so excited, knowing her brother will be thrilled to know that. Yu wants to start practicing right away. But Fuka does not pass any comments and keeps sitting with her head down. Nachai asks her to get ready, as she is the hero of their band. But Fuka wants to talk to them. She says that she has decided to perform solo, which obviously means that she is leaving the band and will join the music company. That angers Nachai that they have just finished performing their second show, and she is already going. But Fuka remains firm with her decision and says it's her dream, so she will do as she says. Sarah wants to know if she does not trust the band for her success, and Fuka tells her she is right. Mikasa just wants to see if she has already decided. Fuka nods her head to confirm. Without her, Sarah thinks there is no way they can continue with this band. That angers Nachai, but they can't stop Fuka from achieving her dreams. Sarah had to accept Fuka's decision, and Mikasa also agreed. Nachai asks Yu what he thinks, but before he can say anything, Fuka tells him she will not stop now. 
Yu speaks up in utter disappointment that he cannot do anything if that's what Fuka has decided. Afterwards, he comes home and keeps thinking sadly about Fuka. On the other hand, Fuka reads the company contract as she invites the company representative home. He asks her to sign the papers after getting permission from her parents. But he is equally surprised that what made her change her mind was that she decided to join the company and leave the band. Watching Fuka's disappointment, he understands it's something about the first love that she does not want to discuss. But Fuka tells him that she has made the right choice about herself and that she will send the signed papers soon. On the other hand, Koyuki calls Yu. He was sitting disappointed at the spot where he usually used to find Fuka. Koyuki is out of town to shoot a song. And there is a time difference between that city and Tokyo. So Koyuki shared that she had jet lag for quite some time. When she told me about her song recording, Yu could not speak much. She notices that something is bothering Yu right now. But he lies, saying that everything is fine. Koyuki wants to get home soon and thinks they will meet as soon as she returns. Soon, they meet in the school's building. Nachai is still sulking at what happened with their band and sees no point in meeting again. He wants to know if they will add a new vocalist to the band. But Sarah refuses this idea, as they cannot give Fuka's place to anyone else. Nachai suggests that they make a public announcement about the band's breakup. Sarah stops him from speaking so recklessly. But Nachai shares that this has hurt him so much because he initially dragged Fuka to join the track. But then he ended up joining it instead. He was happy as he found a comfortable escape from everything until this happened, because he was not getting good grades. He now has to return as sports scholarships are opening, and his coach has assured him that he will recommend his name somewhere, because he thinks he has a lot of potential. Mikasa's feelings are not different from his. During the conversation, Yu remains silent, which angers Nachai, and he grabs his collar, because he knows that Fuka would never have left if he had stopped her. They calm Nachai down, but Yu is truly sad. On the other hand, Fuka records her first song at the music company. The manager appreciated her for her excellent performance after she finished the song. At the same time, Sarah's brother asks her if she wants to join another band looking for guitars. He feels responsible because he was the one to introduce Fuka to the music company. But Sarah says that it's not his fault. Because Fuka is free to make her own decisions, she tells her brother that she wants to join another band and give it a try. Mikasa reaches home, and his sister is surprised at his unexpected return. She wants to know if he has decided to leave music. Only then will his father allow him to stay in this house, which means that her brother has now accepted his defeat. Mikasa assured her he was not abandoning his passion, but he had decided to stop running from situations and try to talk about them. That evening, Yu sat silently in his room when Kiyuki surprised him by coming to his home unexpectedly. She brings many gifts for him and is happy to see him after so long. It was their first meeting about their concert, and she said she loved it, hearing that makes Yu so sad. Kiyuki wants to know if something is bothering him, while Yu's younger sister wants to serve food in their room. The elder sisters stop her from interrupting them. At the same time, Yu tells everyone about what happened to their band, and they understand that they have no band without Fuka. They had the mission of making this band a legend, but now they are all losing confidence in themselves. Koyuki suggests that he can pursue music now, too. Even if the band has gone, he can perform with her. She asks if he remembers his prom with her and that they will perform together on stage one day. That's great news for you, but he tells her it's probably not the best time as he is not ready. Kiyuki assures him that he does not need to worry about it. As for her, all that matters is being with him. Talking so emotionally, she gets closer and they fall on the bed. At that moment, she reveals her love for him. But Yu stops her from getting closer. He apologizes, and Kiyuki immediately understands he does not feel the same for her. Tears begin falling from her eyes, and she gets up. After fetching her coat from the floor, she gets ready to go. But before leaving, she says that Yu must be honest with his feelings and knows that Fuka also feels the same for him. Koyuki came out of the room and could not stop crying. Afterwards, Yu searches for his phone charm and misses the day when they win this. He could not hear when his sister called him as he kept working on something. He has not been eating either, and his sisters are so worried. They conclude that Yu and Koyuki must have a breakup. Sarah rehearsed with the new band recommended by her brother. They are so happy with her and ask her to join their band instead of just performing at one gig. On the other hand, Nachai has started track training once again. His coach tells him that he will have to spend much time running on track once recommended. He agrees to do better work. Mikasa packs his things to go to his father's home. The next day, Yu waits for Nachai to come to school and asks him if he will join the band again. Nachai gets angry and refuses immediately, as he has chosen another path. But Yu ran away after I gave him a CD of the tracks that he wrote. Yu insists that he must listen before making a decision. Afterwards, he goes to Mikasa and asks him to join the band, but he refuses to tell them that he has decided to move to his father's home again. That's the easiest way to achieve a promised bright future. 
but Yu gives him a CD and walks away. Afterwards, he meets Sarah and asks her the same question after giving her the CD of the song that he has written. She politely refuses by saying that she has already joined another band, but she thanked him in their band, saying she quickly got along with the new band. Lastly, he goes to Fuka's apartment and keeps ringing her bell. She knows that Yu is at the door and does not open it. Yu leaves the CD in the mailbox and walks away. He advised everyone to meet him in a restaurant if they liked his song, which had all his feelings. Yu keeps waiting on Sai, and no one comes until 3 p.m. The first person to show up was Sarah. She gave back his CD and said that his feelings were so clear. Then, a moment later, Mikasa joins him, too, after canceling his plan to move into his father's home. He even brings a music sheet for his song. Suddenly, Nachai shouts, announcing his arrival. He shared that he loved the song. Yu shares that he has also given a copy of his song to Fuka, and he selfishly hopes that she joins their band. They hope that she will join them and begin practicing. A few days later, Yu sees Koyuki sitting on a bench and joins her. He shares the news that they have started their band again but are doing it without Fuka. He thanks Koyuki for encouraging him, which is why he can do this now. But Koyuki knows that Yu is very smart, and he knows what he wants to do. Yu apologizes to her for refusing her love, but she gets up and smiles happily. Then she extends her hand and thanks him instead. That night, Yu once again stood before the building where Fuka lives. This time, the door opens, and an older woman introduces herself as Fuka's mom. She tells him that Fuka is not home. Yu leaves after asking mom to tell Fuka about his visit. After sending Yu away, Fuka's mom enters the door of Fuka's room and tells her that the boy is gone. Fuka feels terrible that she made her mother say a lie. Her mom wants her to think again that this is what she wants. Fuka assures her that she knows what she is doing. Yu walks down the street and looks up at Fuka's room. There is nothing he can do to make her change the decision. But at the same time, they have started rehearsing the song Yu wrote to reunite them. His song was so good during practice. Sarah points out that Nachai is making a lot of mistakes. Nachai and Mikasa engage in their friendly quarrels when Sarah asks Yu if she has to talk about something. She shared that her brother received a call from the club where they perform. Now they want them to come again and perform there. Sarah does not look so hopeful, as she knows it is impossible without a lead vocalist. But Yu immediately gets ready and asks everyone, can they do it? Nachai and Mikasa are not sure whether they should say yes or not. Seeing them, Yu promises he will bring Fuka back into their band. After his assurance, they agreed to perform at the club. So Sarah tells them she will tell her brother they are ready. Afterwards, Yu leaves a voicemail on Fuka's landline, saying he has something amazing to tell her. They have received another offer to perform at the same club. He wants to tell them that the performance is on Saturday after two weeks, and he hopes she performs with them. He also requests that Fuka meet him once. As the message ends, Fuka's mom asks, is that you? Fuka puts a fake smile on her face and tells her mom that it is you, and she has already told him she will only perform solo from now on. Looking at the CD Yu gave her, she reminded herself once more that she could not be near Yu no matter what and would never go back. At the studio, Fuka meets Koyuki near the vending machine. She shares that it's always hard initially but gets easier with time. As Fuka tells her that she has decided to perform solo, Koyuki decides to tell her what happened between her and Yu. She tells her sadly that she has broken up with Yu. It was always one-sided, and it was her fault that, in her obsession, she failed to judge Yu's feelings. He was not in love with her. Koyuki tells Fuka she told her earlier that she has never been in love, but her first song was all about her feelings about her love. She knows what she must be feeling. As Fuka hears it, she feels like her protected secret is out, and she denies that it was only a song she wrote after thinking about what love can be. It was her imagination about a one-sided crush. Koyuki laughs at her nervousness and advises her to be genuine with her feelings, or things will only worsen for her. Then Koyuki leaves her after saying that it was great meeting her. After the rehearsal, Yu says goodbye before they know he is going to Fuka's home. Mikasa says he visits her home each night after rehearsal because she is not attending school either. Nachai suggests they should all go to Fuka's house and try to talk to her, asking her to join their band again. But Sarah and Mikasa want Yu to sort things out between him and Fuka first. In her opinion, the best they can do for Fuka is to practice so hard that they should be perfect in the song before she returns. Once again, Fuka's mom tells Yu she has not yet come home. After telling her he would return tomorrow, he gave her something from his back. On the other hand, on her way home, Fuka thinks about Koyuki's advice to be true to her feelings. They pass on a path simultaneously but do not look at each other. As Fuka returns home, she sees her mom listening to the song Hedgehog, where she is the lead vocalist, along with her friends. She comments that they all look so happy in the show. Fuka had a broad smile on her face. Even her mom doubts Fuka's decision because she says she has not seen her smiling for quite a while. Is it what she wants to do? Her mom asks her to be true to her feelings. Because at this young age, many things get mixed up in your mind. 
but you must do what you want, and that is the advice of an experienced woman. Then she gives Fuka a paper that Yu left for her. He apologized to her for bothering her, but he requested that she be a part of their band again. The song he wrote has all his feelings, and he wants Fuka to listen to this once. Also, he wants her to sing that song. On the day of the concert, Fuka comes, and they all decide to excuse the owner for being unable to perform. But Yu wants to ask Fuka one last time, and he requests all of them to give him another chance to bring Fuka. He wants to fulfill his promise to bring her back. Nachai happily agrees as he has decided to follow Yu's lead ever since he joined the band again. Yu runs super fast towards Fuka's home, and her mom opens the door again. She was not home and was out to walk on the street. Suddenly, Yu knows where he will find her. That was the spot in school where he first saw her standing and listening to the song. He was right, Fuka was there, standing all alone. He tells her they can't continue with their band without her. She is still adamant that her selfish decision to leave the band hurt the whole band, and they must be angry with her. She refuses, but then Yu comes up and says he has found what matters to him, the music and the band, and all that is important because she is a part of it. He feels like he is messing things up once again by not being able to state what he wants clearly in front of her. He tells her that he loves her. That startles Fuka. She says she wants to be in the band and loves him, too. Then Fuka hugs him, and they finally find peace with each other. On the other hand, the rest of the band keeps waiting for them. Nachai freaks out, fearing what will happen if they do not come. At the same time, Yu comes there, running with Fuka. She apologizes for hurting them and leaving the band. Nachai tells her that they can discuss this later. For now, they should focus on the rehearsal of Yu's song. But they are sure that Fuka can do it even without practice. She assures them that she will do it. Now, they ask Fuka to perform their ritual before the performance. This time, she asks Yu to do this because he reunited the fallen moon. They join their hands while the whole hedgehog band waits for their performance in the club. The song for you starts, and Nico sees his bass in Yu's hand. In contrast to his earlier reaction, he is happy to see that his bass is in the hands of a good artist. Fuka performs so well. Koyuki knows that Yu is successful in winning Fuka back. After that, only one song is left to complete, but the audience wants more. Before the next song, Fuka asks everyone if they know what they want. Because she did not know, someone helped her find her way. That's how she started a band and now performs in front of everyone. She advises all to do what they want. Then she starts her other song. During the song, all the moments pass through her eyes. The days they spent together in the beach house and how Yu tried to save her when she was drowning and he ended up unconscious. Then she kissed him to bring him back. They started their band and are living the happiest moments together on stage. After the performance, they show each other the phone charms that Fuka got after their first date. After the show in the club, Nachai receives calls of appreciation. But now Yu takes Fuka with him. The hedgehogs reunite again and start performing in the hedgehog studio. Finally, Fuka takes Yu to the shrine where they made a wish together earlier. After making a wish, they descend the stairs while Fuka asks what he wishes for. He shares that he wishes for his bass playing to be better. After a moment, he shares another wish that he made, which is that he wants to be with her forever. That startles her, but then she hugs him and tells him they will be together forever. The anime ends here.